Hi, it's Lene with Bloom Feather Studio here. Today, I thought it'd be really fun to talk about um, watercolor, liquid watercolor, and gouache. What is the difference between all these, and why use one over the other, and can you mix them all together? Well, I have been experimenting a lot lately with um, mixing them up. So uh, today I thought we could do these fun flowers. They're still a little wet um, and I've used all three of these in it. So why use, um, let's, let's talk about liquid first, okay? Why use liquid watercolor? Um, well, liquid watercolor is obviously it's very fluid, okay? So this is Echoline watercolor number 337 I don't know what color it is but it's a pink uh, nice pink color and I just wanted to show you so I'm gonna move these flowers out of the way and I just want to show you kind of what it does so what you can do with this liquid what I like to do what my favorite thing to do is to um, use my water first so say i make a petal okay and then you can go in with it and you can just tap it like this so it has a little dropper i don't even squeeze the dropper really necessarily well i did there um and it will spread out over your paper okay so that's what's fun about liquid you can manipulate it a little bit and uh, it spreads out really nicely. It's very transparent. Um, it, uh, it is really nice if you want to just make something really abstract. You can pull a little bit of it out, but it tends to be a little bit more permanent depending on the colors you choose. So I also have some Dr. P.H. Martins here that I got on Amazon, okay? And this one, so Echo Line's a little bit more transparent, and this one is very rich. And here, let me show you on a different piece of paper. So we'll move that to the side for a second. So let me see, show you the difference. So this is Dr. P.H. Martin's Hydrus. And I'll put some on here. So very similar. I, I feel like this is a little bit richer and you know, you can see the difference here, maybe. Um, yeah, so a lot of the colors, the pink doesn't, um, isn't permanent for a little bit, maybe. You have a little bit of time to maybe move it around. But some of the other colors I have found, like the blues and the greens, tend to be very permanent. So what I don't like about liquid watercolor is that once it dries, it can be really flat looking. I don't know if you can see this on the camera, but this already is starting to look really flat. So sometimes I like to mix it up. Um, so I'll come in with maybe some yellow in the gouache. So here, this is, I don't know how necessarily how to, this is a French um, I think a French brand or a Swiss, Swiss brand, Caranda, Carandash. Um, and I, again, I ordered this online on Amazon and it comes with a bunch of colors. And the thing about gouache is that it's basically just a very pigmented watercolor. Um, so you can come in with it and this one's pretty dry already. So I'm going to try it on this one. You can come in with it and it just kind of, it's super bright, just kind of sits there, doesn't move too much, especially because I've let this dry a little bit. Um, and the yellow, yellow tends to move more than other colors. So let me show you maybe, uh, here, let me do this again here. Pull this forward. Okay, and I'm going to come in with my liquid watercolor and then maybe I'll put in a different color like a blue or something and see how how much it moves see it really doesn't move kind of just stays right there 
doesn't move too much. And then let me see if I can pull some out, some color out. Yeah, so it doesn't pull out, you know, you can't manipulate it too much. Um, and then, so, so then here's this one. It's kind of a mess, but pull some out. The yellow can be manipulated a little bit better. Okay. What I like to do is I like to mix the two together. So I like to get my echo line watercolor. So here I go. I'm going to put some, there's some here already and it's mixed. It's a mixed gouache and liquid watercolor. So I'm going to put a little bit more in here and then just with a touch of gouache. So I'm going to come in with the blue and add more blue. So I think I'm going to add whatever this color is here. I'll show you on this paper. It's like a really bright, bright blue. So I'm just going to add a little bit to the liquid to just add some dimension to it in here. Okay. And then let me show you how it kind of looks a little different. So I'm going to here, I'll put some water in here. Okay. So there's some water and then I come in and I add, and I don't know if you can see the difference, but it's not as flat. Do you see how flat? I don't know if the camera picks it up. That's really flat. So I like to play around with liquid by adding other things to it. So today, to do these flowers that I showed you in the in originally in the beginning, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a you know our our water, then we're gonna add the liquid watercolor combined with just the tiniest bit of gouache, and then we're gonna come in with straight up yellow and add it in like that. Yellow gouache. You can also use just plain watercolor if you want. So if you don't have all these supplies, you can play around with what you have and just see what happens, how it flows. And then we'll come in with the hooker green, which I have here, hooker green. Grab a little bit of that and just tap it into the bottom of the flower like that. Okay. All right, so let's get started. Okay, the paper I'm using today is not expensive paper. It's, um, let me show it to you. It is just Strathmore watercolor paper, the 400 series. Um, I, I kind of like how liquid watercolor behaves on this paper and it's cheaper, so why not use it? Um, okay, so I'm gonna just clip it with a clip like that. And then, um, Again, I'm using this Echo Line number 337. You can get this at Blick or you can get it on Amazon. And then some Hooker Green, Windsor Newton Hooker Green, and um, a little bit of my gouache. So I'm going to show this to you again. I'll be using this color yellow here. So it's a lemony yellow, very bright. And then just a little bit of this blue here. Um, I don't know what. You know, they don't really have names for these colors. So it's it's here in the palette. Okay. And then for my brushes, um, you can use whatever brush you want. This is my favorite brush. Three quarter inch Princeton Select Oval Wash Brush. It's got the tapered end to it. It's really flat. You can use it both this way or on its side. And I'm gonna be doing both things with it. And then I just grabbed this one just to make, you know, the tip of this, I'm just gonna use this to make the stem. So this is a 5 8 inch Princeton Select. Um, I'm trying to read what it says. Oh, you guys, I don't know what, what this is. It's an, oh, it's an angle. Angle shader, maybe five eighths inch. So it's got an angle here. It's also flat. Again, you can use, um, you know, just a regular round brush. 
something with a point to make your, it, that, that part doesn't matter too much. Okay, so, okay, so I'm gonna use just the teeniest bit of color, but feel free to just um, use clear water. Um, I just want you to see what I'm doing. So first I'm just gonna uh, make a big petal like that. You can't really see that like this and then bring it around like that so it's it's an oval and then do some side petals wherever I, I think with the side of the brush okay so flat brush and then side of the brush to make those petals okay and I'm going to make five um five flowers on here just kind of like that um, okay, so let me get started here. So I'm going to start kind of in the middle. I'll do like the middle one. So again, this way, this way, and then a few side petals. Okay. And then I'm going to come in with, I'll do, I'll do three of them and we'll do it all together. So one here, maybe one facing this way. Oop, look what I did. I guess it's going to have to be there. So round or oval and then a few side petals. All points, all coming, converging here at the base of the flower. Okay, and then maybe one down here. Like that. Okay, I don't know if you can see this, but here I go, I'm gonna add some color in. So I've got my mix of liquid and gouache and just kind of tap it into the bottom and just let it flow. Just needs a little bit more. Let that flow. And then down here, let it flow. Okay. Now I'm going to rinse off my brush and I'm going to take some of the a nice thick mixture of the yellow. So if you're using um, regular watercolor, just get a nice thick mixture, but I'm using gouache. So I'm just gonna tap it into the bottom and kind of bring this down to a point down here. Okay, I'm gonna get some more, tap it into the bottom of it, like that, get some more. and tap it in to the bottom okay so they kind of we have kind of like tulipy looking flowers here i'm gonna encourage it to flow a little bit by tipping up my Ooh, i don't like that let's bring it back down okay and then tap a little bit more in here okay and then i'm gonna rinse well actually i'm gonna put this down Pick up my angle, grab some green, okay, and then we don't want this to travel too much because then it kind of overwhelms the flower. So I'm just going to tap it into the base right here and make a little uh, triangle down here, the base. You see that? Just made a little triangle there. I'll do the same here. Just make a little triangle at the base of the flower. Okay. And then, then I'm just going to quickly make the steps. So I'm going to go this way with this one. Actually, I'm going to take this off here. Okay, so I'm going to go this way with this one, that way with that one, and then I'm going to curve this one around like that. So here I go. I don't know why, but I feel like I have to do it fast. So this one, I'm going to follow it here, start right about there, curve it around. Okay, now let's do the top. I'm just going to take off some of this color up here. You see how it's kind of permanent and so even though I went in and I 
pulled some color out, it's still there. Okay, so I'm going to come in now. I have to rinse this off. It has yellow on it, so I'm going to rinse it off for most of it. And I'm going to come up here, and I need two more flowers. So I'm going to put one here. So I'm going to make my big petal and then bring some more petals around like that. And then another one at the top. So I've got this pointing here, 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 here. Maybe one kind of more straight up like that. And I'll put the small petals to the side. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to come in with my color and add some of this to it. Let it flow. Just going to grab some of this out right here. It looks kind of weird. I need to put my clip back on, on the bottom. Okay. And then come in with my yellow. I think this needs a little help here. So I'm gonna, there. Okay, come in with my yellow. I'll show you what I'm doing. Tap it in. Like that. And that looks pretty. You see how this one's a little muddy down here? I'm just going to grab some color out. So I'm going to take some of this color out by just grabbing it like that with the paper towel, rubbing it, and then I'm going to add more yellow to it. There we go. Okay, and then just adding a little bit more water up here. Okay, coming in with my angler. Making my V. Bringing this down. And this one too. So this one's gonna go maybe this way. Something like that, okay? So there we have it. I'm gonna take this up a little. Bring these colors down a little bit. Okay. And I think the best advice is to mostly just leave it. Um, I think the more that you mess with something like this, um, it just, it's, it's better if you leave it. But the, seeing as I said that, I'm going to come in and maybe add a couple more petals here and there. And you'll see, maybe I'll mess it up. Okay, so I'm just gonna let that dry. There, I just added a few more puddles. You see that? Okay, so I'm gonna let this dry and then I'll come back and you can see the dried result. Okay, so here is the dried version. These are actually the ones I did off camera. Um, and I like these so much better than the ones that I did on camera and I'll show you why these ones are drying a little funny on the top here but I'm gonna use that to my advantage with these and I'm gonna go ahead and um, add more color here to these darker parts and so that the flower kind of has a three-dimensional look I already did it down here to this one do you see how this one looks more three-dimensional because I added darker color at the top so you'll see this posted on my Instagram if it turns out um, you can look at it at Bloom Feather Studio. 
on Instagram. But for these, I wanted to show you this one. This one dried much more evenly. Same paper. I think the other paper was just a little bit warped like this. So it kind of the, the flow of the water went towards the top. So make sure your paper is flat. Um, so these, this is the final result of these. And if you want, you can experiment by adding some very pale color in um, in amongst these petals uh, at to, to make kind of a background or like some back petals to add depth. Um, so you can do that if you want. You could add some leaves if you want to. Um, just experiment, have fun. Uh, feel free to uh, tag me on Instagram. Thank you so much for watching and for su subscribing, you guys. Um, I would love to hear your questions and suggestions. You can comment below, uh, post and tag on this Instagram at Bloom Feather Studio. Have a great day. Have fun painting. Bye.